The Lord be with you. Welcome to this celebration of the Holy Eucharist on the fifth Sunday of Pentecost, fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We come to him today, weary and heavy laden in various ways. We come together from the different parts of our parish and from different parts of the world even. We come to him to lay down those burdens and that weariness and to receive rest. In word and sacrament, he refreshes us, strengthens us and enables us to bear his yoke instead of the yoke of burdens and oppression. We come to him, opening ourselves to him and asking for his presence in our lives and in our world. Praise the Lord. Praise him, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his name, now and forever. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us, in silence, call to mind our sins and failings and ask the Lord for pardon and strength.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our Saviour, you reveal your salvation through Jesus Christ, our wisdom and strength. Teach us to shoulder our burdens and give us the strength to carry each other as you have carried us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 24. The servant whom Abraham had sent said to Laban, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going. I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebekah coming out with her water jar on her shoulder. And she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nabal's son, whom Milcah bore him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and a nurse along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. 
Then Rebecca and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebecca and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Beerlahai Roy and was settled in the Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field, and looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, Who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah and she became his wife. And he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Hear the word of the Lord. In place of the psalm, we sing a portion of the Song of Solomon. The response, which you can sing with me, is Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes, leaping up on the mountains, bounding over the hills. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 7, from verse 15. I do not understand my own actions. For what I do not want, for, for what I do not, for, I'll start again. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, 
but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Gospel of Christ according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, beginning at verse 16. At that time, Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Jesus has a knack of being able to summarize his teaching in short, easily memorable phrases. For instance, when he was asked, which is the most important of the commandments, a subject which usually gave way to very lengthy debates, he summarized in the words that we are familiar with from the beginning of our service. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. That is the first and greatest commandment. And you shall love, the second is like it, you shall love your neighbour 
as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Whole swathes of the Old Testament, the law and the prophets, the greater part of the Old Testament, and several centuries of rabbinical teaching are summed up by Jesus in those few words. He gives people the idea of what being faithful to God is all about. Keeping the law, keeping the commandments, means loving God and loving neighbour. In a similar way, Jesus today, in the Gospel we've heard, sums up his appeal to the people around him. He sums up his invitation, his address to them. He looks to the wider population of Galilee, not just to his disciples, and he cries out to them, saying, Come to me, all you who labour and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Jesus said many other things, of course, and he sums up his appeal to the people in other ways in different parts of the Gospel. But at this stage of his ministry, according to Matthew, this is how he wants people to understand what he is about. His appeal to them is, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. It's a very attractive appeal. He didn't go into a very heavy and in-depth theological discourse about who he was or what he'd come to do. He simply cut to the chase and said, come to me and I will give you rest. Why did he need to phrase his words in such a way? The people of Galilee, the people of the wider region, the whole of Israel, were weary and heavy laden. They were weary and heavy laden because of two things principally. First of all, they were laden down by the Roman occupation. Their country was the eastern outpost of the Roman Empire. It was ruled by Rome ruthlessly, with a very heavy hand. Those who lived in that country were required to obey the Roman laws. They were required to pay taxes to Caesar. They were required to acknowledge Caesar as their ultimate source of authority. They were heavily laden by this burden. But they were burdened in other ways as well. They were burdened by their religious leaders. Later on, Jesus would go on to accuse the scribes and the Pharisees of tying up heavy burdens and laying, laying them on people's backs and not lifting a finger to help. The scribes and the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day, had missed the point of what the law was all about. It wasn't so much about love of God and love of neighbour, love, mercy and justice and those things which are at the heart of the law. For them it was simply a box-ticking exercise. The law had been broken down into numerous minute rules and regulations. Every aspect of life was governed by a rule of some sort. And so for the people who couldn't really make sense of it for themselves, they had to rely on the teaching of the Pharisees and the scribes. They had to keep every single aspect of the law as interpreted by the scribes and the Pharisees. And if they didn't, they may inadvertently be guilty of law-breaking in some way. This was a burden to them. The law, which was meant to be a law of love and joy, a law which brought them close to God and his purposes, had simply become a burden. The people were weary of it. Jesus could see that. And so he offers them rest from their burdens, a sense of relief from their weariness, the weariness of being bogged down by the laws of the scribes and Pharisees and by the Roman occupiers. Come to me, he says, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, what is he promising them here? If they come to him, they will have rest. Now, what does he mean? He does not mean that they will cease to be carrying the burdens that are placed on them. The, 
religious authorities will remain the religious authorities, even for those who follow Jesus. He is not asking them or expecting them to renounce their keeping of the Jewish law. And the Roman occupiers will still occupy the land. Those who follow Jesus will still be living under occupation. So none of that will change. So what is he offering them? How is it that he can promise rest to those who are weighed down by these things? He goes on to say to them, Shoulder my yoke and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He offers them a different sort of yoke. Now what is a yoke? There are two types of yoke. There is the yoke which is used to yoke animals together. Two oxen side by side, for instance, would have a wooden beam across their shoulders, and together they would pull that beam, which would be connected to a plow or a cart or something that they needed pulling. They would bear that burden between them, pulling the yoke. The yoke would represent the burden that was placed on them. That's not particularly the type of yoke that Jesus is talking about here, because there is another type of yoke, the human yoke, a yoke which is borne by one person. And again, it is placed across the shoulders to help spread a heavy load and make it easier to carry. I suppose the image of this is that stereotypical image of the 19th century milkmaid who carries the yoke across her shoulders with a, a big bucket of milk on each end. The yoke makes it easier to carry something which is heavy. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus offers a different yoke, not the yoke of oppression, the yoke of hardship, but the yoke of discipleship. It is still a yoke, and there will still be a burden to bear, but it's a different sort of burden. He describes his yoke as a yoke which is easy. Now don't misunderstand what that word means. Most translations of the Bible use that word easy. My yoke is easy. But actually the word really means kind. The Greek word which Matthew uses here means kind and it's used and translated kind in other places in the Bible. But it doesn't sound quite right in English to say, my yoke is kind. How can a yoke be kind? A yoke is simply a lump of wood. It's an inanimate object. It can't be kind or unkind. To say my yoke is kind is to say that Jesus, who imposes the yoke, is kind. He has said to them, learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. To take on the yoke of Jesus, to accept this yoke from him, is to accept discipleship, learning from him, learning from him how to be kind, learning from him that meekness, that lowliness of heart, which characterizes his earthly life. And that can be a burden, it's not easy, but it's a different sort of burden to the one that the people were used to the burden of occupation by Rome and the, impl Im uh, the implications of all that the Pharisees and the scribes were teaching. The burden that Jesus offers the people is a different one. It gives them just as much difficulty in life, possibly even more, but it's for a different purpose. The purpose of keeping the law as demanded by the scribes and Pharisees was simply to tick the boxes Make sure you didn't step out of line. The purpose of the burden of Roman obedience was to make sure you didn't end up being crucified. But the purpose of Jesus' burden, the purpose of the yoke that he places on the people, is different. It is in order to live the life that he has shown, a life of kindness, love, justice, mercy, putting into practice in our daily lives the things that Jesus has shown us how to do. 
So it doesn't mean to say that shouldering his yoke is going to make life easy. Jesus is not coming to the people as a sort of dodgy politician saying, vote for me and your problems will be gone. He's not saying anything of the sort. What he is saying is that the burdens that you bear, which I will give you, will still be burdens, but they will be easier to bear because they are for a better purpose. So people came to him, not all of them. Right in the middle of this gospel passage that we heard today, we left out some verses which were very harsh words of Jesus. Verses of woe directed towards some of the towns of Galilee where his message had not been received. It's clear that some people did not believe him and did not come to him. But for those who did, he offered a different sort of yoke, a different sort of burden, a burden which would may, may sometimes be difficult, but would not be impossible, a burden which would give rest. Now, we really need to hear those words today. So many people today, ourselves and people all around the world, are weary and carrying heavy burdens. In the middle of a pandemic, especially here where we're entering into the peak of it now, so many people carry the burden of sickness. So many people carry a burden of anxiety for themselves or for their loved ones. So many people carry the burden of poverty. The burden of wondering how they can feed their families today. There are so many burdens which are on people's shoulders just now. We need to hear these words of Jesus. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me. For I am meek and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. If we come to Jesus and we shoulder his yoke, we take his burdens which he gives to us, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that suddenly all our problems will disappear. We will still be in the middle of a pandemic. People will still be sick. People will still be impoverished. There will still be gender-based violence going on, widespread. There will still be all the problems in society that we had before, and even more. So what does it mean today then to shoulder the yoke that Jesus offers? It means the same to us as it meant to his first hearers. It means when we shoulder his yoke, we become his disciples. We learn from him. What we learn is how to be meek, lowly, humble in heart, and kind. Because the way that people's burdens are lifted in such a situation as we are in is when we help each other carry the burdens. The words of the Collect for today sum this up very well. Teach us to shoulder our burdens and give us the strength to carry each other as you have carried us. We shoulder each other's burdens because we are the body of Christ. He relieves our burdens because those around us in the body share them with us. It's good to know that we are not alone in facing our difficulties. None of us is alone. We have the support of our church community. We have the support of our families and our friends. We have the prayers of the worldwide church as we pray for one another. And our bishop, Bishop Margaret, prays for all of us every day, very sincerely. The burden is not carried only by what each of us individually. It is a burden that is shared, and we help each other share it in acts of kindness and goodness and love. So reflect on those words today and in the week ahead. Come to me, all you that are weary, and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light.
to conclude them. I've adapted a prayer which may be familiar to you if you say the Office of Night Prayer or Conflict. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through these times, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We affirm our faith in God in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our loving God is here. He listens to us, his children. So let us come to him now in prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church. We pray for Bishop Margaret, for all those who minister in your church in any way, and for all your faithful people. May your church always be open to receive the Father's love. May we be swept clear of pomposity, complacency or self-righteousness. May we come humbly and simply into your presence and wait on you, knowing our dependence on you 
and rejoicing in it. Lord, hear us. Father, we pray for all world leaders and their governments. We pray especially for President Ramaphosa and his ministers and advisors. We pray for the strength of authority that comes not through force and domination, but through cooperation and mutual respect. We pray for our community and for our country, for greater consideration of the needs of others and of our planet, and a desire to right past wrongs and injustices. Lord, hear us. Heavenly Father, we pray for a growth of maturity in our thinking and our loving. Enable us to be childlike. We pray for healing from all the damage that prevents us from growing up. We pray for our children and young people in this church, that you would help them and that we would help them to grow strong. We give you thanks for all that we learn from them. Lord, hear us. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who cry out to you for rest and relief. All those who are carrying terrible burdens that weigh them down. Those who are sick in body or mind, especially those suffering the results of the coronavirus. We pray for all who are known to us to need your healing. Pray too for those who carry the burdens of poverty and anxiety. We pray for those whose poverty denies them the chance of healing. And we pray for those whose wealth denies them the chance of knowing their need of your love. Lord, hear us. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who die unprepared to meet you. And we pray for all who have died recently. We commend to your safe keeping those known to us. And we pray for all our departed loved ones. pray too for those who are dying unknown and unnoticed all over the world. Lord, hear us. In silence, let us bring to the Lord our own particular needs and concerns, and let us lay our particular burdens at his feet.
Lord, hear us. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in your abundant love for us and ask you to hear our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Father, I place into your hands the things I cannot do. Father, I place into your hands the things that I've been through. Father, I place into your hands the way that I should go. For I know I always can trust you. Father, I place into your hands my friends and family. Father, I place into your hands the things that trouble me. Father, I place into your hands the person I would be, for I know I always can trust you. Father, we love to see your face, we love to hear your voice. Father, we love to sing your praise and in your name rejoice. Father, we love to walk with you and in your presence rest, for we know we always can trust you. Father, I want to be with you and do the things you do. Father, I want to speak the words that you are speaking to. Father, I want to love the ones that you will draw to you, for I know. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and indeed our duty and joy, Lord and Heavenly Father, God Almighty and Eternal, always and everywhere to give thanks through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. Because through him you have created everything from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you delivered us from the slavery of sin, when you gave him to be born as man, to die on the cross, and to rise again for us. Through him you claimed us as your own people, when you enthroned him with you in heaven, and through him sent out your Holy Spirit, the giver of life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we acclaim you and declare the greatness of your glory. We praise you now and forever, singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of 
of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Father, through your Son, Christ our Lord. Through him, accept our offering of thanks and praise. And send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, so that they may be to us his body and his blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So too, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Holy Father, with these your gifts, we your people celebrate before you the one perfect sacrifice of Christ our Lord, his rising from the dead and his ascending to the glory of heaven. Gracious Lord, accept us in him, unworthy though we are, so that we who share in the body and blood of your Son may be made one with all your people of this and every age. Grant that as we await the coming of Christ our Saviour in the glory and triumph of his kingdom, we may daily grow into his likeness, with whom and in whom and through whom, by the power of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour be given to you, Almighty Father, by the whole company of earth and heaven, throughout all ages, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour Jesus Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. 
Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who share his feast. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Prayer of spiritual communion for those who cannot be present at the Eucharist. Lord Jesus Christ, saving victim and priest divine, in union with the faithful at every altar of your church, where your body and blood are offered to the Father, I make an offering of praise and thanksgiving. I believe that you are truly present in the Eucharist. To you I offer my soul my body and my life. Come to my heart, embrace me with your love, conform my will to the pattern of your perfect obedience, so that loving you and loving all that you love, I may never be separated from you, but live to the glory of the Father. Amen. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee forever. If you have the ancient and modern hymn book, we will sing hymn 247. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down, thou weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, so weary, worn, and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus. 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. Let us pray. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is a popular week for birthdays. We have quite a number. Today we wish Noreen Brown and Philip Pouchet a happy birthday. And then in the week to come, we celebrate with Mike Davis, Malcolm Thomas, Diane McKenzie, Derek Henderson, Ian Kareem, Chris Thomas, Rocco Radloff, Diana Hargreaves, and Alwyn Woodman. To all of you, many of you who I know are watching now, uh, we wish you God's blessing. We ask for his love to surround you, to protect you and strengthen you during these difficult days and in the months and years ahead. Congratulations and every blessing on your birthdays. We also have some anniversaries coming up this week. Uh, tomorrow, Tony and Veronica Boniface celebrate their anniversary, and later in the week, Ron and Ronnie Adams. Congratulations to you. We give thanks to God for the love which he has implanted within you, the love for each other, which stems from your love for him. And we ask him to bless your love for each other in the years ahead. Let us pray. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The Lord be with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>